welcome to thank you Richard um, you are welcome to view this recording on our YouTube channel following this session and um, I will email that out um, as, as soon as possible once we are able to upload the recording so without further ado I'll pass it on to Richard the validation hub manager oh one more thing Richard I forgot everyone there are captions an option. So if you would like to turn on automated captions, you should see that setting in your Zoom um, options below in the ribbon bar below. If you have any questions and you want the captions on, you can send me a message and I will help you with that. Okay, now to you, Richard. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks very much, Dara. Hi, everybody. Welcome. And for anybody who's returning, welcome back. Um, I do see a couple of familiar names in the list of participants here. So it's good to see those repeat uh, names coming up again. Um, as Dara mentioned, my name is Richard Hinton and I am the manager of the Youth Mappers Validation Hub. The Validation Hub, very briefly, is a sort of small cohort of um, students that are charged with validating the work done by Youth Mapper projects through the task managers. So be it the hot task manager or the uh, teach task manager most often, but as there just said, our motto is we just don't build maps, we build mappers. But what do mappers build? A lot of data. So being good stewards of the awesome community, Youth Mappers decided to stand up the Youth Mappers Validation Hub back in 2019, I want to say, maybe 2018, 2019. Um, and to address, uh, to address the issue of data quality, because that's always, of course, sort of paramount in our minds when we're creating data, we want to be, a, be it of the best quality possible. So. Uh, we set up the validation hub to help um, help sort of manage that aspect of things, make sure the data is of good quality. But as well, one of our um, mandates is to sort of help other people in the Mappers network and beyond to learn about validation. So we have a number of resources on our webpage that you can go to um, about it and to, to learn about the tools of validation and validation itself. And then, um, of course, as part of that, um, part of that sort of education of the broader youth mappers network, we host these trainings. So this is the first one. We usually do them in pairs. We do like training in Jossum because that is a tool most widely used for validation. And then in about a month's time or so, we will host another training which is solely on validation. So our hope is that if you take this training and become more versed or introduced to Jossum. When you start contributing to OSM, we encourage you to use Jossum so you get more familiar with it. When we do our validation training, we invite you to come back to the, to the, uh, the validation training because there, we're not going to teach you Jossum, but what we're going to do is show you how to use Jossum as a tool to validate. Okay, so it's sort of a two-step two-step process. And again, we have resources on um, on our website, on the Youth Mappers website, on the uh, validation sorry, on the Youth Hub uh, Validation Hub webpage about how to use Jossum, how to validate and other sort of resources uh, in that uh, in that um, sort of purview. So um, joining us today and well let me give you the, the sort of the format for today, which is we will have a, um, a quick sort of presentation about Jossum getting it set up. So if you haven't used Jossum at all, then that's fine. It's perfectly fine. I hope you have it installed because we're sort of going to sort of help you get set up with how to uh, get it running and the various tools that Jossum provides. That lecture will then be followed by an actual live demo. We are welcome to follow along. Now, as questions come up, um, you know, have concerns, please put them in the chat window. We'll be monitoring that. And throughout the sort of lecture and through the demo, we'll pause to make sure uh, we capture any of those questions for everybody. OK, so at this point, I'm going to ask the Validation Hub members that are present to briefly introduce themselves. Um, you already know, you've already met me, so I will pass it off to Maxwell. Can you please um, introduce yourself briefly? Hey, everybody. Um, I'm so happy to have you all here. Um, my name is Maxwell. I'm a research um, assistant for the Youth Mappers Validation Hub. I'm also a graduate student at George Washington University. Awesome, uh, Joanna. Hello, I'm Joanna. Um, I am a member of the Youth Mapper 
Youth Mappers Validation Hub chapter at George Washington University as well, like Maxwell, um, which is in Washington, D.C. in the United States. Yeah, and I will be presenting today with Annika. All right, Annika, please introduce yourself. All right, hi, my name is Annika. Um, as Joanna mentioned, we are going to be um, leading the presentation today. I'm also a member of the Youth Mappers Validation Hub, and I'm a senior undergraduate student at the George Washington University as well. Excellent. And I think the other member I see here is Elodie, one of our newest members. Hi, I'm Elodie. I am, like uh, Richard said, I am a new member to the Youth Mappers Validation Hub, and I am a rising senior at the George Washington University for my undergraduate degree. Excellent. I don't think I missed any of the other hub members. Uh, I know some are uh, unable to attend today, but um, I think that's uh, that's it. And thank you, Dara. Dara just put in the link to the Validation Hub page on Youth Mappers website um, in the chat window. Um, again, please uh, keep yourself on mute uh, while we're going through the presentations. And any questions you have, please put them in the chat. We'll address them either in the chat or uh, verbally once we get a little break through the uh, presentation portion. So with that, I'm going to put myself on mute and hide my camera and give all the bandwidth to Annika and Joanna to take it away. I'm just going to share my screen here to get the presentation going. Alrighty, I am going to be starting off at the beginning of our presentation today and then halfway through I will pass it off to Joanna. Um, like I said previously, my name is Annika Sutton. I work with the Youth Mappers Validation Hub and I'm super excited to be getting all this information to you guys. So I'll just jump right into it. Um, the first question that we have is um, what is Jawsome? JOSM stands for Java OpenStreetMap Editor, and it's an editing application um, for the OpenStreetMap platform. Um, you can run it on Windows, Mac, OS, um, any type of desktop or laptop that you have. Um, JOSM is a great tool not only for editing um, OpenStreetMap and adding new, um, new ways, new nodes, um, and new features onto the map, but it's also a great way to validate other edits that people have made to the map, which is what we do at the Validation Hub. Um, our presentation today is going to be just about downloading JOSM, learning what it is, and learning how to use it um, in kind of a standard, just make, making basic edits to the map way. Um, if you are interested in learning how to use JOSM as a validation tool, as well as an editing tool, um, as Richard mentioned previously, we do give a training on both. So stick around for the next couple months and you will learn even more. But just to start off, JOSM is a Java OpenStreetMap editor. Um, you're able to download data and edit it offline. So that's convenient if you're in somewhere, if you're in a location that doesn't have stable internet, um, or if you just want to get some work done while you don't have online access, JOSM is a great tool for that. Um, and then you're able to upload the edits that you make back onto the server and they will become visible on the OpenStreetMap platform for um, all those that use it and see it. Um, but the only problem with JOSM is that if you've never used it before, it can be slightly intimidating. Um, there's a lot of little tools and tricks to learn. Um, but it's once you get the hang of it, it's a super efficient application for editing OpenStreetMap. It has great shortcuts um, and compared to other editing platforms, it's probably one that has been most highly recommended to me. So hopefully by the end of this presentation, you guys will all share these sentiments and think that JOSM is an amazing editing application for all your mapping needs. Oh, and then this slide is just kind of showing you what JOSM looks like once you open it up and you edit some and you load some information into there. Um, as you can see, you have your, <laughs> yes, thank you for putting that in the chat, Richard. Um, but as you can see, you have the um, data that you uploaded in the little viewing window. Um, and then 
to the left of the screen and on the top of the screen, there's a bunch of useful little tools that you can use to upload data, um, edit certain map features, add new map features. And then on the right is just kind of a few um, tools, but in more detail, I'll explain these as we continue through the um, presentation. But on the right, you can just see some things in a little more detail, like all your imagery layers. Um, you can see kind of the tags of all the features that you have selected. Um, and then you can see the history of um, the features that you're selecting. So if you load in some um, information that already has features, already has buildings or roads map, you can click on those features and it'll tell you like who added them, how long they've been there, um, things like that. So this is just kind of basically what Jocelyn is going to look like when you load some data up into it. And then here we just have a little demo that kind of compares um, using Jossum to using ID Editor, which is another um, application software for OpenStreetMap. I personally don't have a ton of experience with ID Editor, um, but I've been told by multiple people that Jossum is a way easier application to learn and use. And if you kind of sit here and look at these demos, you can see how um, on the right when editing buildings in Jossum, it's a lot more quick and fluid. And then with ID editor over on the left, you have to kind of like click each point, click each node, square the building. Whereas in Jossum, you can just kind of like do it in like one quick motion. Um, and then as we go through the presentation, I'll kind of explain how they're doing that on the in the visualization on the right. Okay, um, the first thing one of the first things that I want to go through is just making sure you guys have all these resources. Um, Jocelyn does a great job of giving us a ton of resources to learn how to use um, their application software, which are all going to be linked here. Um, in addition to just teaching us how to use the application very basically, they also have a bunch of information on very useful shortcuts. Um, useful plugins you can download and all types of stuff that's just going to make your Jossum experience easier um, and it's going to give you you know better and simpler tools to edit the maps and put in the most accurate and detailed information that you can um, so yes all these Jossum links are extremely useful um, I highly recommend going through like Dara said the um, slides are going to be shared after the presentation so after this, I highly recommend going through if you're a little more curious and you just kind of, you know, want to get a feel for some things in more depth. These are all super useful um, resources for you. So we're just going to leave them right here for you. And now we're going to talk about the installation process of Jossum. Um, it's my understanding that a good deal of you probably already have Jossum installed at the point of joining this training. Um, but we're still gonna go through it and just kind of touch base. So for any of you that don't have it installed, this will be a real quick run through for that. If you do have it installed, it'll just be kind of like a little refresher, um, but hopefully either way, it'll be helpful to you. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do when you decide you wanna use Jossum is obviously download it and install it onto your computer. Um, but in order to do that, you do um, have to have Java. So you can just, the way I did it is I literally just Googled like Java 8, first link that came up, I was able to download it. Um, I'm not work, I'm working off of a Windows desktop. So if you have a Mac, the instructions might be slightly different for you. Um, but either way, downloading Java should be super easy and self-explanatory if you just go through Google and find it and then follow the instructions that are going to be given to you on the Java website. And then after you download Java, um, you are free to download Jossum onto your desktop and it should run smoothly. Um, Jossum is a free editing software, so you don't have to worry about paying for anything. Um, you can just go right to their website, which is jossum.openstreetmap.com. Um, and then it'll give you a bunch of different versions if you have Windows, if you have Mac, and you can download what, whichever version is going to be the most compatible for your computer. And then once you have Jossum all downloaded on your computer, you've installed Java, you've installed Jossum, um, and then you're ready to start learning how to use it and what all the buttons mean, um, you'll be able to do that. So, 
Okay, so when you first open up Jawsome after you download it, it's going to look something like this screen right here. Um, if you need to update Jawsome, it'll tell you right on the front of the screen. You can go back to the website I just previously mentioned, which is jawsome.openstreetmap.com, um, and you'll be able to download the most recent version. Um, but just as I mentioned before, Jawsome does work off offline data, so you're able to download data um, and just use it right on your desktop um, without having to connect to the internet, which is extremely helpful. Um, and yeah, now we're just gonna kind of go through, there's a lot of housekeeping you have to do when you first download Jawsome. Um, so we're just gonna go through really quickly and touch on all the things that you have to do when you first boot it up, that's gonna make it run more smoothly for you. Um, so you do have to sync it to your OpenStreetMap account, which you can do by going to preferences, um, selecting connection settings, and then just hit authorize now. And then it's just gonna ask you to log into your OpenStreetMap account with your username and password. You authorize that account. Um, and then it's just gonna, that's just gonna link the Jawsome editing platform to your OpenStreetMap account. So when you download information, when you edit information, and when you upload information, um, it can do that smoothly and it'll be linked to you know whoever is doing the actual work and people can click on it and see that you've worked on this. You can get credit for it. Um, and then, sorry, I've, I keep getting distracted by people typing in the chat. Um, but yeah, so by connecting your OpenStreetMap um, username and password, you're just gonna be able to use Jossum upload um, download and upload data more smoothly. And that should be the first thing you do when you open it up. Okay, and then the second thing that you should do for Jawsome setup is set up your remote control. It's also gonna be within the preferences window. Um, these little, on the right, these little animations are gonna show you exactly where to go and select. I know it might be kind of hard to visualize it if you don't have Jawsome open right in front of you. Um, but it's also going to be in the preferences window. You just select remote control settings, enable your remote control, um, and click OK. So very simple, quick, little just housekeeping you got to do when you get Jossum up and running. And then what you're going to want to do is download plugins. Um, I love a Jossum plugin. They make editing so much easier. They make validating so much easier. Um, and Jawsome has a bunch of different plugins that you can research and learn about and choose from. Um, some people have preferences of plugins they do like, plugins that they don't like. Um, but the ones we mentioned in this slide are just kind of some essential plugins that a lot of people use. They're gonna make your life a whole lot easier. So also within the preference window, um, select the little plugin icon, which looks like this little puzzle piece over here on the right. Um, and then you can just, a search bar will come up and you can just search directly for whatever plugins you would like. Um, one that we always recommend people to download is the Building Tools plugin. And that's because this plugin is just amazing for creating buildings super quickly. If you remember earlier in the presentation, um, when we had the Jawsome and the ID editor right next to each other comparing, um, and the Jawsome screen was you know, making those buildings super quickly, like one or two clicks, you have the whole building made. That is because of this wonderful plugin called Building Tools. So highly recommend downloading that one as soon as you get Jawsome booted up. Um, then you're also gonna wanna, some other recommended plugins we have um, are Mapathoner and Utils plugin too. Um, and basically what these plugins do is Mapathoner is just gonna give you um, a bunch of other tools that you would have previously have access to um, in the Jawsome editing platform. They make it, Mapathoner makes it super easy to select a bunch of similar buildings at once. Like if you wanna select all buildings that um, are orthogonal or all buildings that are circular and kind of edit them all at once or give them all uh, a tag at once, Mapathoner is extremely useful for that. Um, and like I said, these are not the only plugins that Jawsome offers. There are a bunch of different ones and feel free to go through the Jawsome resources and go through the plugin list and kind of search and play around with things and figure out which ones you like. 
Um, but like I said, these are just three that are extremely useful, give you a lot of useful tools in Jawstone that you wouldn't previously have access to. And so we recommend people uh, when they first start using Jawstone, just go ahead and download these just because they'll make your life a lot easier. And then we're going to talk about navigating Jawstone a little bit. Like I said, it was a little bit intimidating. Um, and when we flashed that picture up earlier, I told you I'd go into a little bit um, of a deeper view of all this. Um, but like previously stated, your map view or, you know, whatever data you decide you want to download it from OpenStreetMap is going to display itself in this black box right here. Um, typically, when you're downloading data, you'll have a certain window to work in, and we recommend that people don't really map or validate outside of the window that they're currently working in. Um, and you'll be able to tell where your window starts and stops because the map image, instead of becoming clear, it will suddenly have a bunch of lines going through it. It's kind of telling you like, this isn't your area. But whatever area you're trying to map is gonna display right here in the map view. Um, then the main menu is all the editing tools that are going above the top. Um, and like stated here in this slide, if you download plugins, they will show up right here on your main menu for easy access. So it might look a little different depending on what plugins you have um, or which plugins you don't have. It's kind of up to your preference. Then we have here on the left-hand side, all the drawing tools that you'll be using to actually make edits to the maps. So this is where you're gonna be able to add nodes, um, select ways. This is where your little, um, from the buildings plugin, this is where your little building tool will be so you can easily create buildings. Then we have the shortcut toolbar, which is going to be directly on top, right below the main menu. So the main menu is kind of like all the words you see here and the sh shortcut toolbar is going to be all these little icons. Um, so these are basically just commands from the main menu, super easy commands. Um, here in the shortcut toolbar is also where you can upload data or download data from OpenStreetMap. So this is super important because as you're editing, you want to continuously upload those edits, um, not only so you make sure the correct information is getting back onto the OpenStreetMap platform, but it would just be a shame if you spent a bunch of time making edits and then went to upload them and it, you know, they didn't save or they didn't upload. And then the information panels on your right um, just kind of show you um, a more detailed view of some of the things that you may be looking at. So it's gonna include your map imagery layers. So you can see all the imagery that you're using. Um, it's gonna show you the tags of any uh, features that you may be selecting. Um, features can have multiple tags. So it's good to be able to scroll through those, make sure they're all accurate, correct them if they're not. And yeah, that is pretty much it for the Jossum interface. Like I said, you're kind of going to have to like play around with it once you load Jossum up and kind of explore what every single individual button is. But that is the overall view of what you're going to be looking at when you open up a Jossum platform. And now I'm going to get into the actual mapping of the features. So once you've got Jossum downloaded, uh, you've synced your OpenStreetMap account, you've downloaded all the necessary plugins you need to get started, and then you can actually start mapping. Um, that's what we're going to tackle in these next few slides. So before you can map anything, um, you obviously have to choose something to map. You have to find um, data that you can use, which we get right from OpenStreetMap. So once you open up Jossum, if you go to the upper left-hand corner, there's a little icon that looks like a folder. Um, and when you open this up, it'll give you a bunch of information. This is where you upload your edits. Um, this is where you download data. So scroll until you find the download button, which is displayed right here in this slide. Um, and then once you, the download window opens, you can select the Slippy Map tab and use your mouse um, to just pan and zoom into an area um, that you would like to start mapping. For the demo that we do later, I personally just chose my hometown because I live in the middle of nowhere, so it's not really mapped. There's a lot of um, opportunity for me to map features in that area. I know it really well. So, you know, just play around, decide what area you'd like to map. 
And then you're just going to draw a box around that area and click download. And the box that you draw, depending on the size, um, that's going to be like your active map working area. How I mentioned in a previous slide that you don't really want to map outside of um, your active area. And if you do try to, it'll have like, the image won't be clear. It'll have like lines through it. Um, so whatever box you decide to draw is going to be your active area. And then you really don't want to map features outside of that. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing um, an area to map. And then Jocelyn will retrieve the data for this area right from OpenStreetMap, and they'll open it in the Jossum editor for you to start editing. You can also, if you don't want to go about downloading data through that way, you can just go straight to OpenStreetMap.org, zoom into your area of interest, and then just copy paste the URL. Um, and it'll bring the area that you selected into Jossum for you to edit that way as well. It's just up to personal preference, really. Yeah, and then once you have that URL, you can just go um, right to where you went previously um, to download out of the other way, and then hit download location from URL, copy and paste the, into, copy and paste the URL, um, and then once you hit download, it'll bring the information straight from OpenStreetMap into the editing window for you. Okay. Um, once you've selected an area to map, you've downloaded it into Jossum, it's going to look like this. Um, so it's just going to look like features over a black screen. If there's no features that have been mapped in that area, it may just be a black screen. Um, the way to fix that is to just choose an imagery type. So you go up to the very main menu, it'll say the word imagery, you hit imagery, um, and it'll have a bunch of imagery for you to select from. Um, it'll have Maxar Premium, it'll have Bing, um, it'll have ESRI and a few others. And you can just kind of play around. There's no real rule on which imagery you should be using. Um, Typically, most of the stuff I come across works best with Bing or Maxar, but you can just kind of switch between the two, see what looks to be the most accurate, the most recent, what's going to show you the most data, which imagery, imagery is the clearest. Um, so again, that's kind of up for personal preference, just got to play around and see what works for you. Um, but yeah, then you select an imagery and it'll appear, the satellite imagery will appear behind the features and you'll actually be able to see um, what needs to be mapped. Um, sometimes when you load in data, um, imagery may just automatically load with it. Um, if it does not, or even if it does, um, still feel free to play around with the imagery. Um, see if there's features that you can't see in one that you can see in the other. Um, typically, if data loads with imagery um, already attached to it that is the best imagery or the preferred imagery for the task. Um, but like I said, it's just kind of something that you you need to have in front of you and you need to work with a little bit just to see what's going to be the best. It's a like a case by case basis what imagery is going to work best for whatever task you're doing. Yeah, and then you can adjust the visibility of your imagery layers in Jossum as well. Um, so as you kind of see from the little video that's playing on the right, whenever you have an imagery layer that you've loaded into the layer section, um, you can click on that and then you can kind of bring up a more advanced display that'll show you like the opacity, the colorfulness, um, the gamma, and you can just kind of play around with these settings and see whatever is what if you have a personal preference for what you like to work with um, or see whatever displays the ta the um, the features that you're tasked with mapping the best. Um, as it says in the slide, increasing the gamma tends to make features pop out of the landscape a little more. So if things are kind of blurry and everything's kind of muting together and you can't really tell what's a building, what's a tree, um, increasing the gamma might help you kind of differentiate those a little bit. Um, and like I said previously, it's just good practice to kind of compare imageries whenever you're doing a new task. 
um, play around with these settings a little bit and kind of find something that um, not only works for your preferences, but also works for whatever the task at hand might be. And then, so now that you've downloaded JOSM, you've got your data in there, you've decided where you're going to map, and you've got some imagery in there so you can see what you're going to map, you can start actually editing. So this, this is the fun part, guys. We finally made it, where you can add points, lines, shapes um, that represent features that you want to display on the map. Um, so there's multiple tools you can use to edit JOSM. Um, the draw tool is going to be one that you'll use all the time to make new points, lines, shapes, and then whatever shape you draw, you can give, you can describe it using tags and presets. And that'll take it from being a shape that you've drawn to an actual feature on a map that, um, you know, represents the information that's needed. So hello again, Joanna here. I'll be taking over this half of the presentation. Um, I can't really see the chat as well because I'm sharing my screen. So uh, fellow Youth Mappers Hub or anyone else can turn their uh, mic on to ask a question or to let me know a question has been asked. Um, and a lot of this is going to be easier to understand in the demo when I'm actually working through things. I think the part that Annika just described will really make sense when we're going through the demo, but for now we're talking it out and going to work through this presentation just to get a general idea of what we're doing when we're using JOSM. Um, so JOSM bas basic operations, uh, it's always helpful to have a mouse when using JOSM. Um, a lot of us use laptops now, but there uh, are good ways to get a mouse to work with your computer. Um, and the right mouse is what you will use to drag the map. Um, and the left mouse button will be able, you will be able to use to select objects and manipulate elements. Um, again, we'll see this a lot more in the demo, but you can change shapes, you can drag nodes, um, and yes, both the left and the right mouse you use constantly. Um, and then the scroll wheel on most mouses um, you will use to zoom in and out of the map to kind of get your general area and then to zoom in on features um, because it's most helpful to be zoomed in. Just making sure there's not a question. Okay, seems like we're good. Um, yeah, Joanna, there, there have been some questions, but we're trying to answer okay. them in the in the chat, so it should be good. But we'll, but so some of them were, were, as you mentioned, related to um, to actual the demo side of things. So we'll sort of address some of those when we get to that point. But, okay, great. And you can let me know what those questions are when we get there, so I can address them yeah, yeah, directly. Sure. Yeah. Um. So. When using JOSM, the keyboard is also really helpful and important. Um, first, if you just hit the S button, you can then select elements with your mouse, uh, in, in which case you'll be able to view and edit the tags and move them around, and of course, manipulate the objects and just work with them. Um, pressing the A key, will allow you to add elements. That's kind of the draw tool that Annika was mentioning earlier, um, because that will allow you to add nodes um, to existing ways or create new ways, create new shapes. Um, and that's really where your data uh, contributions come in, in using OSM and specifically JOSM. Um, and delete. Uh, it's not the same for all computers. Control delete, um, I think works for PCs and then FN delete um, works on Macs. I, my computer is a Mac, so I use FN delete when I am 
selecting features to delete, um, though it's more so only my own data that I delete. I try not to ever delete anyone else's data. And if anything, help edit it and use it in the feature uh, or in the task at hand and not delete other people's work. Um, so the literal features that we're working with are nodes, which are the little dots that get created when you use the add tool and kind of mark angles between shapes or in segments. Um, each node is assigned a longitude and latitude as soon as you click it onto the screen. And those are kind of the, the small points that define features that we map in OSM. Ways are uh, an ordered list of nodes and they are then connected by line segments. So when you use the at the draw tool, which again is the A button, um, it will create a continuous line of nodes until you um, press the S key, for example, and it will take you out of the draw tool. Um, and ways are usually paths or roads, um, just not connected at the end. Features, um, if the features are connected and create a shape, then that is a closed way or area. And this is usually a park, lake, island, or building. Most often in JOSM, I am making buildings and JOSM has its own tools to do that um, without having to click every single node. But if I were to do that, you just make sure that the first and last node are the same. Drawing a node, um, a standalone node. So you wanna make sure you have nothing selected. Um, you can either do this by clicking the screen anywhere that's not a feature, uh, or you can press the escape button and that will unselect everything. Um, you then again, press the A but key on your keyboard or um, in JOSM, again, you can select draw nodes, um, which we'll see in the demo. And then you use your left mouse button somewhere in the map view and press escape. So then you double click to create a node. Um, if you click one time, it'll want to continue the draw function but if you double click, it will stop with that singular node you've just created. Um, and then you can return to select mode, which is hitting the S key. Drawing away, um, in this case, you start with the same thing, the A or the draw tool. You left click where you want to start the node and then, um, as you drag away from it, you'll be able to see a line created. And when you click, the next node will be created, it will appear, and that will create a segment in the way. Um, you keep doing that until you've reached the end of the way. You can double click on the last node. You can hit the S or you can hit the S button. Um, and press escape so that you are done with that way and no longer selecting it or adding to it. So here, just to kind of visualize what I've been talking about, um, this is what it looks like to map a road. You select A and trace the road using imagery, again, whichever imagery looks best to you. And you, well, we can wait till the, hopefully it loops again. So yeah, so the first click and then it creates a segment and you click and you work through and it's really, once you get going, it makes a lot of sense um, to add a tag to the road because everything needs to be labeled when we work in JOSM and when we're uploading data, you hit Alt A and enter the key as a highway. And then um, 
it will, there's certain uh, values that go along with highway. And um, in many cases, you'll kind of know if it's a residential road or a larger road, um, but there is a resource to know what kind of highway you're working with, especially uh, in Africa, mapping highways, you need to be pretty specific. Um, if somebody, one of my youth mappers, um, coworkers would wanna add that link to the chat, it's really helpful. It's something that I, who have been using Jossum and working with this software for a while, I still reference very regularly, almost every time I'm mapping, especially in Africa, just so I know exactly which tag to be using. Um, and to edit that tag for the road, you hit Alt S. Mapping land use, this is going to be a shape. Uh, so you close the nodes that you are working with. And again, you draw using A and you outline the shape. And then to add a tag to this, you hit Alt A, or you can go to the tags and memberships window, which will be on the right. Um, and you do in the key, the land use, and then below it, the value given whatever um, land use you think it is. In the case of this demonstration, it looks like they're mapping something as residential because it is, mostly homes within that area. And then you press okay and it is done. And it the data is within your JOSM. Um, tags, again, really emphasizing tagging being very important. They are describing the geographic data in OpenStreetMap, which is helpful for you to know what you've done and helpful for um, project leaders to see how you've been contributing to their projects and just helpful to other users to see kind of what's going on in an area. Um, tags are descriptions of the elements you've created and every tag um, is given a value uh, to be more specific and to kind of help everyone using OSM uh, to be on the same page and know what's going on. A key describes the general classification and the value, again, is more specific. Um, they, the values that go in or the what you put into the key and value are always lowercase and do not have spaces and have underscores instead. <clears throat> so adding a tag, um, you'll see as we get into the demo what the tagging window looks like, but you hit add when selecting a feature. And um, when the window appears, you'll see that key value entry point. And um, there are known tags and presets that can help guide you into what you what values you should be putting in. Um, adding presets, so drawing points, lines, and shapes, uh, we define what they represent. And to add a preset, you select the object and go to the presets menu. And this will help you with your tagging if um, you just want to work with what's already in the JOSM interface. Um, here it's saying you could put in as a key something that's man made. And then as a value, it's a tower. Um, mapping buildings. So JOSM is really helpful in that uh, the plugins that we've enabled um, allow us to just create building shapes. And it will know exactly that it's a building and come pre-tagged. Um, so you select the B on your keyboard and you, uh, it will automatically have you drawing a rectangle and um, you just kind of fill the shapes of buildings. 
Um, and then there are more ways to make the buildings look exactly how they look um, and not just, you know, not all buildings are rectangles. There are often different protrusions. So we'll get into that. Um, but the great thing about this tool and the emphasis of this point is just that you can draw all these buildings and not have to individually tag each one. Um, so again, there are parts of buildings that get kind of uh, non-rectangular exactly. And um, in this case, we select the X on our keyboard and you will select the side of the shape that you created and um, you can either pull it in or out. So as you can kind of see in this animation right here, um, the X has been selected, they create the node, and then they pull out that extra part. Um, and in order to create that node when you're in X, you just double click to add that point and then you are able to drag. Um, of course, also not all buildings are rectangular um, and you can actually create circular buildings within this same building tool, which is the B on the keyboard. Um, in that case, you hit Alt Z on your keyboard and you just create the diameter of the shape and then it creates this circle around it, which is really great. And again, it'll be tagged as a building. You don't have to do that individually every single time. And then to get back to the rectangular shape, you hit Alt R. Um, and then you are back to drawing rectangles. Um, there are also buildings that have courtyards in the middle and do not uh, are not solid throughout. Um, and luckily, Jossum has also figured out a way to deal with this. So you will draw the build each part of the building around the courtyard um, as separate buildings, and then you will overlap them. And then you select them all with the S key and hit shift and hold that down while you select all of the buildings. Um, and then you will um, hit shift J, uh, which turns it into one shape. And um, the, the shape is always uh, squared, but I always like to hit the Q key just to make sure that all shapes are squared and it's true to the building shape. Um, to fix buildings, uh, a lot of times when we come in to using OpenStreetMaps, other people will have already contributed to the areas we're interested in. And to make those buildings squared, you can hit Q and most of the time buildings should be squared. Um, so it's important to make sure of that. And um, to rotate, you hit shift control and hold them down at the same time. And using your mouse, you can rotate. And then to resize control and alt, and you just pull the shape in or out to resize. Um, Sometimes features get connected by a node that shouldn't be connected, um, in which case you select the node that the two shapes are sharing and hit G to unglue them. So one of the most important things to make sure that our work actually gets seen by OpenStreetMaps, by other users, by project leaders, is to save frequently. Um, you can do this using the up arrow, which is in the left-hand corner. Um, and I try and do it like every 10 or so changes I've made every two minutes really, really frequently, especially if I'm 
confident in the data that I am editing and creating. Um, and when you do that, uh, Jossum will have this window that's on the screen and you can say, I made buildings or I edited pre-mapped or edited existing features or something that just kind of lets other users know what you were doing while you were working on this project or area. Um, and there's also hashtags to help project leaders have an idea of what's going on and they can easily find that. Um, so that's kind of what's, what that is for. And yeah, that's the chain set comment. Um, oftentimes when we are working in, or when we are working with OSM, we're working from a tasking manager, which is usually teach OSM or hot OSM, I believe is the full name. Um, and to do so, you need to make sure that you have Jossum running on your computer already. Um, you find the project that you want to work on, that you've been told to work on, or however you came up upon a project. Um, you then make sure that your editor in the bottom left is a, is selected as Jossum, otherwise it'll automatically open it in the ID editor. And then you select map a task, or you can select a, one of the squares um, that look like this. And then it'll say map selected task, and that will automatically launch to Jossum because you have your remote control all set up. And you can change this default in your own OSM personal account settings so that you are always going to Jossum and it doesn't want you to go to ID editor every single time. So saving and uploading, again, very, very important. Um, it will show you a list of what you have done in, within either the last time you opened it or the last time that you have hit save. Um, and you will add a comment, like what I was saying, I added features, I uh, squared buildings, um, I have local knowledge, so I added specific features or something, just so other people know what you've been doing and understand why you've been doing it. Um, and on your first upload, you will be asked to enter your OSM account details. And after that, it'll be a much quicker process. In order to see your changes, um, you can go to the link there, openstreetmap.org, um, and move to an area that you edited. And you will then see those changes on the map real time. It's really, really cool. Um, really shows you kind of what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, and if you don't see them right away, it might just be a slow turnaround and those edits and additions should be there within a few minutes. Um, this is a really helpful graphic to look at. Um, here you see like A tool, draw nodes, S select objects, G unglue ways. Um, this is a really, really helpful graphic that I have visited many times um, and learn something new every time I look at it because I like forget to look at a key or yeah, there's just a lot to gain from this. And so, yeah, that is our presentation. Um, I will begin the demo and hopefully this will start to make more sense. Um, and please let me know if there are questions while I set this up. Thanks, Joanna and Annika. I just wanted to draw attention to the time. It's 11 o'clock and we have this, 11 o'clock where we are in the Eastern Daylight Savings Time here in BC. Um, we have a scheduled, have this training session scheduled for another 30 minutes. So just keep that in mind. 
there were some questions in the chat um, regarding uh, that I think will be answered. A lot of them will be answered during the actual demo portion that we've uh, outlined, but there may be a couple others that will that will come up uh, along the way. Um, but uh, regarding the presentation portion, are there any questions regarding the tool setup um, or uh, anything that was just covered in the presentation portion? I realize that some of uh, some of that information will be covered, such as you actually using the tools will be covered now. You'll actually see it live uh, demoed for us. And so you can sort of um, follow that along. But if you have any other questions now, um, before we get into the demo part, please, uh, please let us know. And I'll jump in real quick and say that someone does have their hand raised from mm -hmm. the chat. Um, and old, if you're still there and would still like your question answered, you can um, unmute yourself. Okay, I'm gonna take it that that question has hopefully been answered at this point. Um, but yes, everyone is able to unmute yourselves if you would like um, at, to ask your question or put it in the chat. Um, okay, I will get started then. It seems like we're ready to move on. Um, so this is first part, just looking at the setup. So you need to go to the preferences here and pull that here. Um, it doesn't look the same on everyone's computer. I know that mine looks a little bit different than what the presentation looked like. Um, to see where I can authorize OSM and connect it to my the online account and JOSM, I go here and um, you can use basic authentic authentication, which you just enter your username and password, or as the presentation was showing, um, use OAuth, and you then hit authorize now. And I already have my account information, so I'll hit authorize now again, and just test that it's working. It says that I have am successfully able to use this. Press OK. I accept that. And my online account and JOSM should now be connected. Um, the remote control is down here. And um, this part, you just hit enable remote control and don't really have to work, worry about what gets selected below it um, most of the time. Yeah. I wanted to pull out, I was wanting my, my JSON, but I didn't get it for all. By the time I launched, you had gone. Yeah. Um, so back to like where I logged in or just how to get to this. So um, I, I launched the JSON, but like I, I, where you went to and then this window popped up is what, what I wanted to know from you. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, like just starting from here, um, this is how you open your preferences. It's like this little shape like that, um, that yeah. is at the top when you open Jawsome. Okay. Um, and then to go to the sign in, um, mine looked a little different than it did in the presentation. Um, but the shape that it looks like is these two like squares overlapping right here. Um, I think on some people's computers, it looks like an earth or something like, oh yeah, it, it's two computers here. Um, and then that's kind of smushed into that small space that is right there. Um, and this is connection settings for the OSM server. 
And then you can enter your OSM credentials within the basic authentication, or you can use OAuth and um, work through um, making sure that that it, it says like access token and making sure that OS, you, you sign in again with your username and password. And then um, it will ask you if you want to check if that was successful. And you check if it comes back successful, then you are good to go. Does that answer your question there? Yes. Okay. Yes, um, and then the remote control is down here, kind of looks like one. You can see it better up here and you just uh, click enable remote control and you don't need to worry about, or at least for now, you probably don't need to worry about what gets selected down here. This is the main part to select. Um, and then you can go to your plugins, which is the puzzle piece, blue puzzle piece. And to search for them, um, the, the plugins we talked about in the presentation are buildings, which is gonna allow you to use that B tool on your keyboard. And that's here, buildings underscore tools. So you'll select that. Um, and then, uh, same thing with utils here, you'll select that and mapathoner, select it. Um, and then you can click update plugins, um, and all of those will be added to your Jossum that is on your personal computer. And that is most of the setup. Um, and, you know, other plugins may come in handy when you need those, given um, kind of what your needs are or what your tasks you're doing. But those are the main ones to get started with. You can hit OK. And so now I can download data um, with this down arrow in the left corner. And I was looking at um, George Washington University where I go to school um, on the map, but this is the slippy map. And you can zoom in and out to anywhere in the world that you want to map using the scrolly part of the mouse. And so I'm zooming in, have this area, and I think I actually will look at um, the National Mall. Um, and the way I got down there was with the right click on my mouse. I hit download. And now I can see there's a lot of trees in this area, which makes sense because I'm working within a park. Um, and here I've got like the way I can work within Jossum if I have a certain thing selected or I'm clicking here, my tools, if I were to hit A, that's when I can start drawing. Um, and I'm, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not gonna save any of my work, um, but here are kind of your tools. And then this is where um, you can get information about things. So if I were to go to the S tool, so I clicked S on my keyboard and I select this, I can see that it's tagged as a natural thing that is a tree. And um, it tells me exactly what this selection is. Then um, I can add imagery to this. Um, Bing, for instance, see how that looks. I could look at how Maxar Premium imagery looks. 
And it looks like in this area, the max R is more defined. So maybe I'll choose to use max R. Um, but if this imagery wasn't really fitting right in terms of just being offset, um, I can select this tool with the red arrows, um, which then I'll select the imagery I'm looking at, max R. And now if I click and hold down, I can manipulate the imagery um, to better fit where what positioning I think works with the data that has already been put into OSM. Um, to do what Annika was talking about with kind of trying to make the imagery as easy to work with as possible, I may manipulate the gamma, um, which in this case isn't really helping me much, um, but if that were to help, or if I wasn't sure how to um, find the best imagery, I might try and work within these settings to make it as coherent and clear to see as possible. Um, to start drawing, I will zoom into an area and hit the A tool. And now I have clicked my first node and am now creating line segments. Um, and I mean, I could create any shape I wanted. And to finish it, I double clicked. Oh, double clicked on that last node. Um, and to get out of the A tool, I hit select. And now I can select it. And um, in order to make it a square, I hit Q and it works with the shape I've been given. So it didn't make a perfect square, but all of the angles are right angles. Um, and if I wanted to tag this as a building, I can hit add here and select key building value. Yes, and now that's tagged as a building. Or if I was looking at buildings, um, I would hit the B tool, draw the first node, drag it across and click. And if I select that using the S key and clicking, I will see that it also says building yes. So in most cases, creating buildings will be easiest just using the B tool. Um, to delete these shapes that I created that don't actually exist, I'll hit FN delete, FN delete. Um, and I want to make sure I have more to go through, but I want to make sure that Annika also gets to do her part of the demonstration. Um, so I'm not sure, Hinton, what uh, suggestions you should have for what tools I should go through. Um, um, I think you did most of them. Look at the, uh, our list here now. Um, how about showing how to do uh, uh, drawing a circle and aligning mm -hmm. circles and a, a lining nodes in a circle? Some of those okay. things like that. Yes. So back in the B tool, um, if I were to see a circular building, I would hit uh, Alt Z, and now it has that like cylindrical shape there. And I will draw the diameter, and it has created a circle for me. So that's how I could create a circular building. Um, if there was something that I wanted to tag um, that wasn't a building, I could hit A and draw as good of a circle as I can, and then um, hit S and select it and hit O. And in that case, it will um, align the nodes that I've drawn into a circle. But if I were to uh, do the same thing again and hit A and draw 
something similar to a circle. Um, and I wanted it to be a better circle and not just work within the nodes that I've created. I would hit the up key and O at the same time. And it kind of works with that, with what I've given and creates a few more nodes to create a more circular shape. Um, and that's how you would create a circle versus in this scenario of just hitting O, it aligns the nodes into a circular shape. Uh, I think I'm ready to hand it over to Annika. So I will stop sharing my screen. Okay, give me just one moment, pull my screen up for you guys. Okay, can you guys see that? Good. Okay, great. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna go through most of my demo information. It's just really quick little keyboard shortcuts for you guys. And then I'll just go into the Mapathoner plugin in a bit more detail. Um, what, oops. What we're looking at right now is just my little hometown in Bell Author, North Carolina. Um, and then I'm just going to really quickly go through and share some keyboard shortcuts for you guys for um, rotating, resizing buildings that have already been made, um, how to connect nodes, disconnect nodes, things like that. So first, um, I'm going to talk about resizing. Um, so if you select a building that's already been created, and then you hit Control-Alt. Um, it'll allow you to either make that building larger or smaller. This is super helpful because um, a lot of times, especially when validating, people have made buildings that are the correct shape, but they just maybe don't fit on the image exactly how they should. Um, and like we said, we never really like to delete other people's stuff and remake it because it's you know getting rid of their work, creating more work for us. So being able to resize the tools is very helpful. Um, like I said, it's just holding down control and alt at the same time. And then with your left mouse button, you can just kind of drag it in and out to make it larger and smaller. I believe if you're on um, a Mac, it's the control um, button and the option button, not the alt button. So just be aware of that. Um, next, if you need to rotate a building, um, just hit, just select a building and then hit control and shift. And that'll allow you to rot rotate the building around, um, maybe to get it at a better angle if you need to. Um, if there's any reason you need to rotate a building that's already been made, control shift will allow you to do that. And I believe for the Mac, it is the same, just the control and shift buttons. Um, now I'm just gonna talk briefly about um, some edits you can make for nodes. Um, a very common issue that we see all the time, especially with validation, um, is people that have made buildings or um, features that share nodes. So let me just create an example for you here. See, say we have one building here, and then you know they go and make another building. Um, but they're connected here at this node. So if you try to say you need to move this building, then you're like, oh no, they're connected. Um, you don't really want that to happen. A super easy way to get rid of that is just select the node that they happen to be sharing, um, hit the G on your keyboard, and then that unglues them. So then you can just move them right away. Um, like I said, this, especially if you do validating, um, you're gonna run into buildings that are connected by nodes all the time. So it's super easy and useful just to remember that little G key on your keyboard will separate the nodes and then you'll have two separate buildings. Um, another useful tip about nodes and ways is just how to split ways, how to combine ways, and then how to merge and um, disconnect nodes. Um, so say you have a way like this road right here that's all connected into one, but you decide that um, you, it actually needs to be two separate ways. So the easiest way to go about that um, would be just be to select your way. So select the road, make sure it's bright red, which means it's selected. Um, 
and then decide what node or what exact point you want to split um, the road at. So once you've decided that, select that node, go up here to tools in your top left, and then there's this little option to split way. Um, if you'd like the keyboard shortcut, they're all listed right here for you. So you can either go to tools and hit split way, or you can just hit P. Um, and then it'll be two set. It still shares this node, so you should take note of that. Um, but now it, the road is in two segments. So even though it still shares a connection, um, when you select the road, it'll you'll only be selecting one segment at a time. Um, if you would like them to be completely separated um, by node and all, just hit the G key like I previously stated. It'll separate those nodes, and then you can separate them like that. Um, on the flip side, if you come across a way that is a connect, disconnected in two separate parts and it should be one part, um, you can merge them right back together. And the way to do that would be to select these nodes. So to select more than one feature at a time, just click one, hold shift down, and then select the other. Then you're gonna go back up to your tools and hit merge nodes, or you can just hit M on the keyboard. And that is gonna connect those two nodes into one. Um, keep in mind that even though these two nodes are now connected and this way shares a point, they are still split into two separate um, ways. So to combine those, um, you're just gonna select both again. So select one, hold down shift, select the other section of your way. And then you can go to tools and go to combine ways and it will combine them um, back into one for you. If you're combining two ways that go in opposite directions, maybe this road was mapped going this way, and then the other section of the road was mapped going the opposite way, it usually it'll come, it'll, a little pop-up box will come up and it'll be like, do you wanna change the direction of one of these ways? Um, and you can just select yes, and it'll create the node for you. So those are just a few um, little shortcuts for you to connect nodes, connect ways, um, unglue buildings if you need to. Now, really quickly, I'm just going to go over the Mapathoner plugin. Um, let me move this out of the way. Okay, so once you download the Mapathoner plugin, you're going to be able to find it up here in your main menu. Um, it'll be right here under the name Mapathoner. Um, and you can see it has a bunch of pretty useful tools already. Um, it allows you to select a residential area. So if you come down here and you click pick residential area. Oh, my bad, I still had that way selected. Um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select, you know, a couple buildings, maybe make them on different ends of your residential area so you can like fully encompass it. Go up to Mapathoner, hit pick residential area, um, and it'll just draw an area around whatever buildings you've selected. Since I only selected these two, it only did this area. Um, but if you wanted to select, you know, multiple buildings and get it to draw it around the entire area, you can. I just wanted to give you a quick demo of how that would work. Um, Mapathoner also allows you to select, if you want to come, come down here and say, say select non-orthogonal buildings, um, it'll pull up any buildings that have not been squared. So you can see in this edit, it looks like all the buildings have been squared, so we can select anything. Um, let's just make one that's not really quick so you guys can see. And then if I came up here and said select non-orthogonal buildings, it would show me every building that needs to be squared. It'll select them all for you. And you can just hit Q and it'll square all the buildings at once for you. So super easy tool if you have a bunch of buildings that need to be squared and you don't want to go through and do them individually. Um, as I mentioned during the presentation, uh, Mapathoner will also um, allow you to create multiple buildings at once. So I'm just going to do a really quick demo of that with these little buildings over here. Um, so all you need to do is select your draw tool over here or press the A key, like Joanna mentioned. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to start going around these buildings. Um, 
don't fill in the building completely. You just have to hit three points on each building and then just continue dragging and drawing and do that for each building that you want to draw. Just connect the three points. Um, then come up here to your Mapathon or plugin and click batch orthogonal buildings. This is going to be if you're creating square buildings. Um, and when you hit that, as you can see, it'll automatically fill in all the squares for you. When you select these buildings, they'll already be tagged as buildings. So you don't have to worry about going in and doing a preset. Um, additionally, if you wanted to do that with circular buildings, there are no circular buildings um, in this map section that I've selected. But if there were, all you would need to do is just, um, instead of drawing three points like you would for an orthogonal building, um, just draw the diameter of each circle. So we're just going to pretend like these are little circles that I'm drawing. And then when I come up to Mapathon and hit batch circle building, it'll fill the circles in for me and they'll be as large as whatever the di diameter I selected is. And as I mentioned previously, you don't have to add presets to these, they'll already be registered as buildings. So that's why Mapathon is, you know, an extremely helpful tool. It allows you to get a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff done at once. It allows you to square a lot of buildings at once if you need. Um, and then the last thing I'm just going to show you guys really quickly, just so you know where it is, um, is the search function on Jossum. So if you come up here to edit and then down here for search, you can either search for objects by preset. So say you wanted to find every object that was labeled as a building. Um, go to search by preset, type in building or select from the options that it gives you. You select search and then it'll pull up all the um, features that match that tag for you. Um, if you wanna get a little bit more advanced, there is a search function where you can just um, type whatever you'd like. Um, the example that I have queued in right now is just the name of a road. So if I wanted to find all features that included this name, I would just type in whatever name I, I wanted, hit enter, um, and it would bring up and highlight any features um, that match whatever word I've typed in. Um, you can also search um, depending on the amount of nodes that a building has. As you can see here, you can search on the type of way it is. Um, I'm not going to go into detail with all that just because we're kind of running out of time, but I did want you guys to just be aware of where the search option is. You can kind of play around with it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think that is all that I have to show you guys. Um, I hope it was super helpful for you to kind of visualize this and not just see it in the PowerPoint screens, but also in Jossum. So um, now I'm just going to turn things back over to Richard and Dara. All right, thank you, Anika and Joanna. That's that's awesome and and right on time. Um, we're gonna address uh, more any questions you guys have, but just before we do that, um, I did create a small poll that I would appreciate if you guys would take to give us a little bit of feedback. It's completely anonymous if you wish, and so I'm gonna release the poll. But then, as we do that, if you guys have more questions, um, we'll certainly uh, certainly address those. Let me just address, it just has five questions. The poll will take you a minute to uh, to do. And if you can see the poll, please let me know. I'm new to giving polls on these things. As you saw in the last one there, the, uh, the um, search function is very, very powerful. There's not a lot of, a lot of, um, material online about how to use it. So it's a little bit of trial and error, um, but it is very useful if you wanted to find all buildings that had between four and eight nodes, you could do a selection set like that. If you want to find all features where building equals yes, or building equals house or something like this, you could search for those and select everything in your data set there um, for that. So the, fun the search function can be very, um, very, um, very powerful. It's very powerful to uh, to uh, to use. There was a question, I believe, at the top. Um, Somebody's mentioning about how they um, I turn my camera on. Um, how they could they're they're missing some of the um, delete tool I believe, that they wanted to use, and that is something you can bring back through the um, through the preferences 
tool or preferences button. I'll just share my screen really quickly here. Um, and again, I'll leave, I'll leave the poll running and it'll, it'll take you, you know, a minute to quickly go through those radio buttons. I appreciate any feedback you guys can provide us. Um, but let me share my Jawsome here real quickly. And actually, let's do this. All right, so you'll see my Jawsome here. And if I go to my presets, oh, sorry, my presets, my preferences. And um, if you go under toolbar, on the right hand side, it shows you everything that's available. On the left hand side, it shows everything that's currently in your toolbar. So if you're missing a tool, I think someone earlier mentioned how they're missing the uh, delete function. So there's a few different delete tools. Under file, you'll have delete, and that will delete the entire uh, layer that you're editing. Under edit, there's another delete function here. Okay, and that's to edit individual features. So you can select a feature, collect the little garbage, uh, click the garbage can, it will delete that feature that's been selected. Or one of the ones that some people find very helpful is under mode. And you can add the delete tool um, to the mode, which I believe I've already added. Which is why it's not showing up. Oh, sorry, staring me here in the face. All right, so you can go into delete mode as well. So the thing is, you can find a number of, there's one for presets and stuff, things like this that you can do. <clears throat> um, so you can actually cu customize your toolbar and the tools that show up. Um, so if you can't find the tool that you used to have, because maybe with the new version of Jocelyn that you downloaded, that it sort of moved things on you, or maybe they're not using that as much anymore. Um, you can always find the tools there. You just got to sort of dig for it a little bit and then, uh, and then uh, add it to your toolbar or add it to, you know, the um, sort of mode selection tools, things like this. That way you can sort of have the, that functionality back again. Um, cool. So at this time, are there any other questions um, that are lingering? If you want to put up your hand, if you want to unmute yourself or write in the chat, we're here to answer any questions you guys have. Um, please. My name is Sam Bruce Wawai. Hello. So, sorry, yes? Yes. Um, please, the Mapathon, uh, I want to show it. I want it to appear on my, my Windows. How do I do it? How do you do which, sorry? Um, the Mapathon. Mapathon. Okay, yeah. Yes. All right, uh, Annika, actually, you just demoed I, that. Do you want to uh, show that again real quick? Yeah, I can do that. Let me just a second. I'll share my screen. Yeah, because the Mapathon tool can be a little tricky, especially to start. Um, can you guys see that? Yep, we can see your window. Okay, awesome. Um, the Mapathon tool can do um, a couple super useful things for us. Um, just to begin, kind of the more basic things, um, if you have duplicating buildings, so buildings that are clearly mapping the same feature, but there's like, there's only one building in the image, but there's like three features of buildings on top, you can hit select duplicate buildings, it'll select all those duplicate buildings for you, and then you can just delete them all in one fail swoop, um, so you don't have a bunch of repeats of the same information. Um, you can also use it to pick a residential area. Um, so say you just wanted to highlight like, oop, I did not mean to move that. Um, if you select, you know, a, a group of buildings and then you go into Mapathoner and say pick residential area, it will automatically draw a residential area around all the buildings that you've selected. So you don't have to go in and do it by um, node by node by yourself. So that's very useful. Um, I think the big thing for Mapathoner is being able to map um, multiple features all at the same time. So I'll just demonstrate that with these features over here. You can do it for both circular um, or square shaped buildings. You can also do it for L shaped buildings, yes. Um, so if you wanted to do that, um, all you would need to do is come over and select your draw tool. 
um, which is on the left hand side or select A on your keyboard. Um, and then if you're doing square buildings, just go into every building um, and just start mapping it like you would draw it normally, except don't finish and connect it out. Just th draw three points. So hit three out of four points on your building and just keep drawing, bring it right over to the next building you wanna map, hit three points on that one, and then just continue doing that um, until you've got, you know, you've decided these are all the buildings you wanna map at this time. Come up to your map -a or tool and hit batch or orthogonal building. And it will go ahead and fill in all the buildings for like, since you only created three points, it'll go ahead and recognize that that is supposed to be a closed square building. So it'll go ahead and fill in that fourth point and square it for you. Um, and this is convenient not only because you can map multiple buildings at once, but also because all your, your buildings will already be square. So you won't have to go through and hit the Q key and square them. And they will also already have the tag that says building yes. So you won't have to go through each individual building and add a building tag. Um, so Mapathoner is super useful for doing multiple buildings at the same time. You can also do it with circular buildings. There are no circular buildings on this imagery, but if I were to use Mapathoner to do circular buildings, um, I would just draw like the diameter of the circle. So let's say this is how like long I want my circle to be from one point to the other. Go over to the next circle, draw a diameter again. Go over to the next one, draw the diameter again. Um, and then you can just come up to Mapathon or hit batch circle building, and it'll automatically create all those circles for you with whatever size you've wanted. And the, it'll be perfectly circular. It will already have the building preset. Um, so those, that's kind of the useful things that you can do with the Mapathon or plugin. Anika, can you, uh, in case anybody missed it, um, would you show them where you found or you got the Mapathon or plugin to begin with? Just make sure people are aware of that as well. Oh yeah. Um, do you mean like after you've already down downloaded the plugin? No, actually, how how to download the plugin, how to find the plugin. Just okay. uh, just review that real quickly. Yeah, exactly what I was looking for. Oof, I don't I don't quite remember. It's been so long since I've downloaded a plugin. Oh, the preferences. Oh, yes. Okay. I was like, where, what tab is preferences under? Okay. So you go over to your edit tab, which is in the left-hand part of the top of your toolbar. Um, at the very bottom, there's going to be this little thing called preferences. And then on the left-hand side, there is this tool called plugins. It's also got the little blue puzzle piece, um, if you'd like to locate it that way. And then in the search bar, there'll be have a bunch of plugins here recommended for you. But if you want to search for a specific one, say Mapathoner, um, you just type it into the search bar, it'll come up um, and then you can select the plugin and download it straight um, from this preferences window. This one's, I've already downloaded Mapathoner so I won't hit the button, but um, you guys can see how to locate that, hopefully. Yep, and then with any, like with any plugins, you can search for a number of plugins and download a bunch at the same time. So mm -hmm. if you search for some, check them, you just remember to click OK at the end so that it will make sure it downloads and installs them for you. Awesome. Thank you, Annika. All right, we are past time here, folks. I don't want to keep you longer than, uh, than uh, we promised we would. Um, but as we came up in the uh, chat a couple of times, um, we will be making this recording available uh, very soon, as well as the presentation slides. They will be available as well. And everybody who registered for this event will get a link from, uh, from Dara as it's stating that you can download the um, presentation and uh, the recording and the presentation itself. Um, thank you for those who have participated in the poll. I'm going to close the poll now. To, uh, uh, thank you very much for that, providing that feedback. Um, Please be on the lookout for our next training session, which will probably be in about a month or so. So again, each sort of quarter or each sort of semester, academic semester, we try to do two trainings, one in Jossum. And then a month or so later, we try to do one in, we hope to do one in validation. Because the idea is that hopefully if Jossum is new to you, you are going to start using this as a tool as your primary editing tool, get some get comfortable with using it. And if you're interested in learning more about the validation process, then we will actually be using Jossum as a tool 
for validation. So the more experience you have with it, the better off you'll be and a better validator you can become by becoming familiar with this tool. So hopefully you enjoyed this presentation and you learned something from it. There's a lot of tools. We only did a it's sort of a break, a basic sort of intro into JOSM. The more you get into it, the more tools you'll find. I'm still learning tools and tools that I don't know about um, as I use JOSM more regularly and uh, throughout the last few weeks. So a lot of tools there. And I'm hoping you guys got uh, something out of that. But uh, thank you very much for attending today. We really appreciate it. I'm going to stop the recording now. Uh, and then um, 